Good morning, everyone. Welcome. How good is it? Um, absolutely. How good it is um, to be here live together uh, this morning. Um, here at Grace Fellowship, able to worship together, able to be together, able to, um, to learn more about God and to be in his presence. If, um, I'll say this quite a lot, I think we all say it in different settings, if 18 months ago um, I'd have said I'd get a clap for saying good morning, I'd have wondered what had happened. Um, but maybe there's, there's a lot to learn and hopefully um, we're still learning um, that these 18 months have been what they've been. And um, we don't just throw them away and get on with it, but we, we listen to um, what's happened, maybe, hopefully, learn about God. We're not only live here at Grace Fellowship, but we're also live online. So welcome to those people who are joining us online now or later on in the week. It's great that you've been able to be part of us um, as we worship together. And we continue to put our broadcast out on YouTube each week um, as part of our um, connecting with everyone. Not, a, <coughs> excuse me, not everyone is able to be here um, each week, um, but we do have space um, for those who are able to be here. So um, please continue to book. Please continue to tell others um, as we meet together and make the opportunity to be together, which we, we've missed so much. Today, we um, celebrate harvest. And we're going to think about it a little bit differently to perhaps how we would traditionally. And we're going to think about what harvest means um, in a more wider way, perhaps, um, than um, how we would have done in the past. For me, harvest has a uh, really strong connection. Uh, for those who don't know, I grew up on the farm. Um, the house was the farmhouse, and that's where I lived. And harvest uh, was a key part of um, my life, um, my day-to-day -day life in lots of ways. But as we think about harvest, there aren't many of us um, who will harvest um, a crop regularly. I know some of you have allotments. I know some of you um, in your garden, something grows, and you think, I wonder what that was, and you manage to cut off perhaps a flower, or perhaps there's something you take and you, you, you use. But for lots of us, it's a very different way to think about harvest. And as we think about harvest, uh, what we're doing in that moment is we are thinking about uh, the um, importance of all that God provides for us. And God provides for us in so many different ways. We're thankful for the things that we have. We're thankful for um, the place that God places us. We're thankful to God. We are um, over three weeks, we're thinking about thankfulness. Last week at our um, open air joint service, we thought about being thankful and not taking things for granted and how easy that is to do. And maybe that's something that we've learned um, in this time. Today, we're thinking about thankfulness for all that God gives us and, and what response does that create in us or what response should it create in us? And then next week, um, as we share communion together here, um, we're going to think about how thankful we are for Jesus. Just a few bits and pieces to let you know about that's happening, a bit of um, family news. Our children our young people are meeting on East Chadley Lane, and um, it's great that there's a team of people there able to provide children's ministry. Um, so that's where they are, um, and they'll be there each Sunday um, as we go forward, as we're here, they'll be there doing that, um, which is great. And just to say that... Um, just keep an eye on our weekly news our, um, as we continue to communicate around COVID. Um, please remember that if you have any symptoms, um, please um, watch us online and be part of it in that way. Um, it's important that we stay safe. Um, as we move around and as we sing, um, we're asking people to uh, um, wear masks. Um, as people are seated, um, it's okay to take them off, but for some people you forget. So um, as we're together, I encourage you um, to have masks on. Um, afterwards, we have got refreshments. Um, there is tea and coffee. So if you're able to stay, please do. They're just through this door here. Um, lots of people won't know the way around the building, but they're just through this door here. Uh, toilets are back through the doors here. And then um, on the right, um, Andrew or Sue will show you the way if you can't find them and make sure that you find where you need to go. We're here to worship God. 
We're here to praise God. We're here to exalt, glorify, and to think about who he is. And we're going to worship God and have time to do that together. I think sometimes online, as sometimes for those of us who um, are uh, leading and preparing, sometimes it can feel quite rushed because of the, the environment you're doing it. And as I was praying this morning, preparing, um, that, that thought on my mind that it's important that we take our time to worship God. That it's not just about doing the agenda, doing the plan, but it's about us being an opportunity to worship and to give God praise. And as we sing, um, I encourage you, join in, sing, enjoy the worship, the live worship that we haven't been able to do. In the midst of it, don't worry about getting in every last word of every song. But recognize that God is here. His presence is here. His spirit is here. And together, we share that. Band, come up. Um, if we stand, I'll pray, and then we'll start off. So if you're able to, um, please stand. Let's pray, and then I'll hand over to you, Martin. God, thank you uh, that we're able to be here. Thank you for providing for us as a church at this time. God, thank you that we're able to be together and the joy that brings. God, as we now come and worship you, God, I thank you that you will be here by your spirit. God, help us to see you as we worship. Amen. Morning. How exciting is this? We're back. So nice to see you guys. So nice to play with real people that aren't me from the previous evening. Oh, it's good. of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is Awesome power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God. God is for us, 
then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Then what could stand Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Well, come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. The world that He gave us is one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. His open arms for God so loved the world that He gave us, His own and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well, I'm walking in freedom for God so loved. God so loved the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him, for the wonders of His love. Bring your addictions, 
Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very soul. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. seated. I'm going to invite Rachel, who I've there you are Rachel, invite Rachel to come up. Um, we are thinking about harvest and at times we get very focused within our own setting and very close to home. 
And um, Rachel isn't, come on up, Rachel. Rachel won't particularly be talking about harvest in other parts of the world. It's important to think about uh, where God is at work in other parts of the world and what's going on. this for me. That's why you've, you've got this in front of you now. You normally wouldn't have had. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a privilege for me that I'm the first person who's being able to do mission focus from, from with the proper congregation, so praise God. Um, for any of you who don't know, this small charity works in South India, in Chennai, and um, we've, we've been going for over 30 years now. And we help very poor Anglo-Indians, people of mixed race. Now, almost everything that I'm going to say is connected with the virus, unfortunately. But um, over the years, we, we roughly help about 80 children, 80 senior citizens, 15 students, and perhaps 20 disabled people. So it's a, a wide range of people who wouldn't be able to look after themselves. But you will probably remember the horrendous photos a year ago of um, the situation in India with the virus and how there were literally thousands of people dying all every day and no idea how to deal with, with all the bodies and all that. But wonderfully, um, at last the vaccine has reached India and most people that we are dealing with, with the Vine Charitable Trust, which is the charity we work with over there, have now had, had their vaccines. And um, so the situation isn't so, quite so dire. But during that dreadful time, um, they were able, able to keep in touch with all the people that we help by sending um, postal orders, um, to, to people and being in touch with them on the telephone. Only a few people who actually live on the street weren't able to be touched, uh, reached, and they, we always had people who lived somewhere near them who were able to get in touch and take their money to them. However, things have improved, and now the, um, the office um, just, well, to start with, it was open just for appointments only, but now from last week onwards, people are being able to come um, just as we are here, able to come together much more freely. Um, it's been um, difficult, particularly for the schools and the colleges, because just as here, um, things have been online. And, um, you know, people just, particularly these very poor families, just don't have the equipment for receiving it, so they were, children were receiving it on a, on a phone. And really how you can receive schooling on a, on a phone, I, I really don't know. So I think there are going to be a lot of children who get very, very much behind with their schooling. And so far, the, the university colleges have gone back, but only the top three classes in the schools have gone back. So the younger children are still having online learning. Now, during COVID, as you can imagine, there have been some families who've come for the first time for help because they've lost people, the men, their husbands or what, the fathers and mothers have perhaps lost their jobs and um, not able to pay the fees because um, education is not free uh, for in the schools where the teaching is in English. And because Anglo-Indians' first language is English, they will all, always go to one of those schools. Um, there are, of course, lots and lots of schools for Tamil-speaking children for which they don't have to pay, but, but the children that we help are all English medium, needing an English medium education. So it's been really, really um, tough for some families to get back to school. Um, I'll just tell you a a story about um, one family. Um, this is a new family who come to us. The father is called Daniel, and the children are called Kevin and Angel. Uh, Angel, we've come across several angels over there. The Anglo-Indian families often call their children quite interesting names. But of course, nowadays that happens here too, so, 
<laughs> um, anyway, uh, Daniel was, is partially sighted. He has very thick-rimmed glasses, and the job that he had was not a high-paid one anyway. He was in charge of housekeeping in a hotel, but he lost that job because, of course, the hotels, like in England, were no longer um, t having visitors. And um, the mother also lost her job. So last year, when the fees needed to be paid, he drew out the money from his savings account, which had been set up by his employer. But at the end of the year, he hadn't fully paid, and the school said, you can't take the exams if you haven't paid. And it was at that point, fortunately, that they heard about our charity. So um, they came to us, and we were able to make up the, what was missing, and the children took their exams. And now they are able to, to go to college and school because we are, have taken them onto our books, so to speak. Um, we're taking um, Kevin on kind of permanently for his um, degree. And as the parents get back to work, um, they will help their, their daughter. So um, that's a family that we would never have come across otherwise. Um, now, over the, this is, um, Kevin is, is now in his second year reading, um, doing a BCom. Um, we have had four new students coming to us um, during this time. And um, of the, the students that we've been helping over the um, last years, um, we've had two only that have graduated this year. We've got six in the, their second year and three now in their third year. And one who we've been helping since she was, who has just started college, who we've been helping unusually ever since she was a baby. And I just want to tell you her story. So we've, I think, got her picture up now. Oh, sorry, I should have said. This, this is Daniel's family. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking, it's all behind me. Um, and we'll have the second picture now. And in, in, we, here we have a picture of the two girls. And Faustino on the left is actually an Indian Christian, a, a Catholic family. And the girl, her foster sister is on her right, uh, on, on the right. Um, some years ago, I probably told you the story that when the tsunami happened in 2004, you remember on the Boxing Day, Faustina's family were at a Catholic retreat and she had been left as a baby with her grandmother and the parents went down onto the beach to buy fish for the, their breakfast. And it was at that moment that the tsunami hit and both her parents died. And this little girl was left with the grandmother. Now, the grandmother had a, a job working in a, an Anglo-Indian family. And um, the, the family, rather wonderfully, took Faustina in together with, with the grandmother and made them, her a part of their home. And so she has grown up with a foster sister, and they've been treated um, just exactly the same. We've, we've also helped the foster sister in, in some ways with her education. So this little girl has had family life, and she, I, sadly she won't remember her parents, but her grandmother has always been there for her and still works for the family that she lives with. Now, Faustina and her sister have both got to the age of going to college, and um, they've gone to a um, a Catholic college for teacher training. Uh, it's a, a, a really good uh, qualification for teaching. It's not a degree course, but it's for teaching uh, junior school children. And we are absolutely delighted that we're being able to help this little girl who, who we've known and supported for so long. So um, that's one of our joys, really that we've been able to see her and lots of other children through uh, education and hopefully we'll get a good job. Now, just finally, just to um, 
mentioned the church that uh, we're involved with. Um, Grace, who works for the Divine Charitable Trust, is married to David, who is the pastor of the, of the People of the Way Church. And of course, that's been affected like we have um, by the virus. But the way that they've coped with it is they, they have three services. So on a Saturday, all the um, senior citizens looking around, so those of us who would consider ourselves senior citizens would have church on Saturday. And then any, I don't think there are so many family uh, pe people here. There are, there are some who are not quite seniors yet who would um, worship on Sunday morning and then on Sunday evening, all the youth would worship. And so they've been able to go like that um, from quite a long time ago, and it's worked really well. Um, David is in touch with five churches that he sort of oversees, and he's not able to go and visit them, sadly, but he is on the phone with them. But the big thing to pray for, um, I, I've, the first thing I've said, please pray for, is the children and the difficulty with their education. But the other thing is this new building that the church has undertaken, which is nearly finished. It's still got um, electrics and, and plumbing and some plastering and finishing off. And they've got to a point of running out of, their, out of money. The church is being used. It's, it's perfectly usable, but, but incomplete. And um, the, the difficulty has been that the planning permission is running out and they, they really need to get it finished. Um, otherwise, there's a danger that they might be even told to pull it down, which we must just pray doesn't happen. So um, that is the second very important thing for prayer. We've got the prayer requests up there, I think, yes. Um, so thank you very much. And um, it's a small work, but it's serving the Lord among the poor and they have lovely opportunities of sharing their faith with, with these folk, and a number of them have over the years come to know the Lord. So thank you for listening. We're going to spend some time in prayer and um, pray, um, particularly this morning, um, in light of what Rachel has shared with us um, um, with AIC. Let's pray. God, thank you for the reminder today that uh, we, the whole world isn't the same as we experience here, um, here in England. God, um, we see new stories appear and new stories go, and God, it can quickly um, move away from our minds as quickly as it stops being on the, on the news. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us. Help us to um, be aware, God, that we would have more um, awareness of what's going on um, outside of our own situations that we find ourselves. God, thank you for Rachel sharing with us today about AIC and, and just helping us be aware again of what's going on. God, I thank you that you are present um, with people all over the world. God, you are present in the situations that we all find ourselves each and every day. God, we thank you for the provision of the um, vaccine um, in India and God, the speed that it is getting out to people and for those people involved with AIC, God, we thank you that they've been able to have access to it and that they have um, taken it. And God, we pray that vaccine continues to bring that protection. And God, we pray that vaccine continues um, to make an impact that allows people to um, care for one another again. God, thank you for sustaining um, all those who are part of AIC, those who work on behalf um, those who are working in different settings in the church and in the charities, God, those families, students, people who are supported as well, thank you for, for sustaining them. God, particularly, um, we want to bring to you um, these prayer requests, God, for, for Grace and for John and for others. 
as they have to try and um, work within those COVID restrictions. God, I pray, Lord, that they would be able to stay in contact with um, the individuals, the families, the students. God, with those other churches that are mentioned as well. God, we pray there'll be more and more opportunity for communication and connection. God, we pray for those families who are, um, at this time, have lost jobs and um, it is, it's really hard or um, almost impossible, God, just to be able to do the day-to-day things of life. God, we pray that um, work will return um, to, to the, those people, that there'll be employment opportunities, and God, that they would be able to earn so they can take care of their families. God, for the children who haven't been able to access school, um, haven't had the technology easy, um, God, I pray, Lord, that uh, as schools start to open up again, God, we pray that that would happen, that these children are able to access that, they're able to go back and they're able to learn. And God, we pray for the funds for the um, building work. God, we pray that the rest of the funds are able to be found so this, the building work can be completed. God, we pray that it will not have to be taken down. God, our, our hearts ache at that thought even. God, we pray that that will not happen. That, God, that you will um, miraculously stand in, provide, make, make a way that that building work is able to be completed. God, for each one of us, um, as, we, as we listen, God, there'll be other people that come to mind. There'll be other people that we know Um, in ministry, perhaps around the world, other people we know locally who, because of um, the COVID situation, uh, it's difficult to do the things that you're calling us to do. God, we'll know other families um, who also haven't got employment, finding it hard to provide. We'll know children who haven't been able to go to school, people around other countries around the world where people haven't had any education at all, God, we pray, Lord, that you would continue to be at work, continue to um, encourage churches and Christians in communities in those countries um, to continue to, to do all that you call us to do, to be you in those communities, to bring around change, to, to give where you call us to give. God, thank you for what you do. God, we pray that you would do more. Amen. Amen. I'm going to continue um, with our worship band um, come up. Just to say that we aren't taking up a um, offering at this time, just the plate moving around doesn't work. There is a plate as you leave. Do not feel like you have to give. I know for many of us we give um, direct debit, but it's one of those things um, which is important for us to recognize um, the giving that we're able to do. So um, that's, there's a plate as you leave if you wish to make use of that. Um, but as we come to worship, our giving is also part of that worship. So um, let's, let's be aware that our worship is more than just singing the songs. Thank you, Martin. Okay, if you'd like to um, hop up. Nothing can separate Even if I ran away Your love never fails I know I still make mistakes you have new mercies for me every day Cause your love never fails You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that you love me, and your love never fails.
strong and the water's deeper. I'm not alone here in these open seas. Cause your love never fails. The chasm was far too wide. I never thought I'd reach the other side. Your love never fails. Joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rain I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me And your love never fails together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. Stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rain, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. You 
have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God This is right. gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love the Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love and the Lord is good to all. He has compassion in all that He has made. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far He has removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is That's how far He has removed our transgressions from us. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh Praise the Lord. 
has removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far he has removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far. He has removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far He has removed our transgressions from us. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise. the Lord, oh my soul, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Let's not rush from this place. Let's just stand, sit quietly for a moment, just in God's presence. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, it's great. Right. Um, let's find the Bible reading. So, two Bible readings this morning. If you've got a Bible, please grab it. If you are watching us online, then find yourself a Bible and follow along. Uh, the verses should appear on the screen, but remember that I have control over that, so I may have just put something up that's not right. So it's always important. Find the Bible verses and make sure they are what I say they are. So our two Bible readings today. First one is from 1 Kings chapter 17. And I'm going to read verses 7 to 16. And this is about Elijah. Sometime later, the brook dried up, and because there had been no rain in the land, then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have instructed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I can have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil, olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me and from what you have, from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up And the jug of oil will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by 
Elijah. And our second reading is from the book of Mark in the New Testament, and chapter 12. I'm going to read verses 41 to 44. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched a crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in her two very small copper coins worth only a few pence. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty, put in everything, all she has to live on. Andrew, grab me a glass of water, please. Thank you. I'm going to start coughing, which isn't as socially acceptable now as it used to be, if I'm not careful. I have done my test, I am okay. Harvest is our festival, our celebration, where we come and we are able to give thanks to God. It's a time where we um, think about um, our harvest. Uh, As I said, most of us won't have been involved in the wheat or barley harvest, um, which for those who are interested is running very late this year and um, isn't going to plan. Um, If you know any farmers, um, feel free to um, bear with them as they're trying to get in harvest, which is much later than normal. But most of us won't have thought about that or aware of it. We may have seen some large machinery. Um, We may have been kept awake late at night by noisy machinery doing harvest. But but it just happens around us at times, and we're not really aware of it. Harvest in our world that we live in today is not restricted either to perhaps how it might have been in the past, or perhaps it never was, but we have more awareness now. Harvest goes on um, throughout the year. For us in this country, um, as I say, we're just coming to the end of wheat and barley harvest. Um, We're um, in the first bits of potato harvest and a little bit early to start any sugar beet yet, not quite big enough. But around the world, harvest is happening um, throughout the year because seasons are different, um, because climate's different around the world. And, And even in our country, more and more because of consumer needs, Um, That's us. Um, Things like carrots are harvested all year round. Um, Every single day of the week, um, all year round, carrots are being taken out of the ground. Um, Can't be stored, so they have to be harvested fresh from the ground for us because we would be really sad if we didn't have the carrots that we need. Maybe not you particularly, but consumers, that's how we react. So harvest goes on and on and on. It's always there. In the Bible, we're encouraged to celebrate harvest, to remember to give thanks to God for all that he provides for us. I wonder if you were to stop for a moment, just in your own mind, what what is it you're thankful for? Are you thankful for um, for the harvest which you have managed to get from your garden or your allotment or from the fields? It's just not relevant to most of us. But we are thankful that when we go to the shops, we are able to get the food that we want. How quickly do we forget? Only 18 months ago, suddenly shelves were empty. It never was a crisis like many people around the world face. It was quite embarrassing listening to some people. Tesco, in response, have cut their pasta lines. You can no longer get their 38 different pastas. They've cut it to seven. If you've noticed that, that's what they've done to make sure they get able to get the pasta that you want to the shelves at the right time. 38 different types of pasta. We are thankful that we don't have to queue up. Um, There are people, um, we would have seen the stories, and again, we forget very quickly. Um, I know people living in other parts of the world where they had a one-hour shopping um, slot each week to go to their late local shop. That's how COVID was, um, how they coped with COVID in the countries that they lived in. We were restricted because we weren't allowed out very much, but we still were able to go and get what we need and when we needed it. What is it we're thankful for? Thankful for our homes, having somewhere to live. Might not always be the house we want. We might always 
might be in a place where we wish we had more or a different house or not quite in the right place. But thankful for the, the homes that we have. Thankful, maybe you're thankful for one another, being with other people. Thankful to be here today. Thankful that we're able to have family and friends in our lives and the importance of that. Traditionally, Harvest Festival would be around us bringing produce that we've grown or um, we're able to um, um, find that we're able to bring as a part of our thankfulness. Harvest Festival was about us coming and bringing to God because God has given us so much. And um, so we haven't done that physically today. Maybe for you, as you think about harvest, as you think about what it means, maybe God will call you to give in a different way. Because as, as that produce would have come, those flowers would have come, on Monday morning afterwards, there would be a team of people who would take those things and make sure there were people um, in the community who were blessed by them, to receive them, to use them as a blessing. It was people who, who didn't always need it. People weren't necessarily um, in a situation where they were in crisis. But that was taken to bless people, be able to give to others as a blessing. Harvest is about us recognizing all that God provides for us, about us responding and being able to give something out of what God has given so that others are blessed. What does that mean for us today? What does that mean in our context? What does that mean in the, where God has called us to live, God has called us to work? How can we, out, out of all that God has given us, in our thankfulness, be a blessing to other people. In our first reading, we read about Elijah. And we'll know different parts of Elijah's story. Some of them we teach regularly or we hear about regularly because they're quite um, spectacular. Fire falling down from heaven is quite um, amazing and it's a, it's a good story that we, we, we know well. But Elijah, there's a lot that happens in the life of Elijah. And in this situation where he hasn't got any food, he's got nothing. And he goes up to this lady, he says, could you just give me some bread? And she says, if I give you this bread, we have nothing to eat. When I think about giving, when I think about what God has called me to do in the way that I live my life, because of my own situation, I don't often have to consider giving my last whatever it might be. At times, I might let someone eat the last biscuit instead of me, but there's usually another packet in the cupboard, and there's definitely more in the shop I can go and get. But this lady was in a situation with her child where to give to Elijah meant that she had nothing. There was nothing left. I wonder what advice I would give her if she was to quickly send me a Facebook message or, you know, ring me up, you know. What, what should I do in this situation? There's this guy, Elijah, he's, you know, he seems godly. But if I do it, my son and I will die. I wonder what advice we would want to give to that person. Elijah says, trust God. As you give, you will be given back more. A miraculous situation. Some of us may know of or experience a miraculous situation that God has provided for us. Sometimes, as I said last week, we may take that for granted. We might just jump over it too quickly. We don't actually think about what God has provided for us. We just think it's lucky or coincidence. God is at work in our world. God is at work in our midst. God is at work with each one of us each day. The second um, account that we read is Jesus sitting there outside the temple, outside the temple treasury, watching what happens and, and commentates on what he sees happening, speaking to his followers, his disciples. We can get so stuck as we think about what God is calling us to give about the way that we think about that within um, the context we're in, monetary terms. What does it mean for us to give out of what we have? And the amount that we give um, is about a, a number, and it's about compared to everyone else, and the bigger the number. Over and over again, when Jesus spoke, and through the Bible, we, we hear and we read about the fact that it's about what goes on within our heart. It's our heart attitude that matters. It's, it's, it's what we're 
um, why we're doing what we're doing. As we think about all that God gives us and think about what it means to give, you may not, you won't have, because I haven't got anything, you won't have bought a marrow today. But what is it that God would say for you to give? And as we give, it's not about how much money that's worth. It's about what God is speaking to us and giving sometimes out of what we haven't got. As you think about harvest, as you think about what it means for you to give and be thankful and be a blessing to others, it might be that you decide um, if, well, maybe it might be that you decide to make a cake. I was going to say if you can make a cake, but make one anyway. Um, you know, God's a miracle working God. It might taste good. But make a cake. It might be about making a cake, maybe for your neighbors, maybe for the staff room at work. And when someone says to you, why have you made a cake? Why are you offering this? Be bold. Make that opportunity to say, actually, we've celebrated harvest this week at church, and I want to give because of all that God gives to me. Might be about offering to cut someone's lawn or hedge um, in their garden. Might be about willing to sit and talk to someone and give someone that time. Giving of time is something we take really for granted and something we need to be really good at. Um, there may be other ways that God starts to drop in your mind of ways that you can give. As you, as you give, it will cost you time, whatever you do. And it's one of those things for me that I'm always aware of, that as we give our time to others, we could choose to do something else with that. It's always a sacrifice when we do that. God calls us to make sacrificial giving. God calls us, as we give, it will cost us something. As we give, it will have, um, it's something that we we didn't have to do, but we could. It's It's been a strange time where we haven't been able to do perhaps the things we feel God is able, telling us to do, God is asking us to do. Things we read in the Bible about being there for one another. But so many people have responded in such powerful ways. I don't think there should be less card writing now that we're able to see each other. It's still such a blessing to receive a card from someone, a note from someone, a a letter from someone, a phone call out of the blue. Just because we happen to be sitting in the same room, it's very unlikely that you will all get a chance to speak to each other after our celebration today. Why not still say, keep that... um, Keep that commitment to write cards. I know some of you write cards um, daily to people. Why not keep that commitment? And actually, that doesn't have to fade away. There are things that we have done in the um, last few months that have been such a blessing, and they need to stay and need to be part of our way that we give to others. Later on today at 4 o'clock, uh, Songs of Praise broadcast is live on YouTube um, and um, also Harvest-themed, um, thinking about harvest. Today, maybe you'll have time to watch that. Maybe as you finish watching it, you think, I wonder who else has watched it. Give someone a call. Maybe you want to invite someone around to watch it with you, someone that you might just be sitting on their own to watch that today. Maybe as you're here today, you think it would be great to invite someone to come along next week. Let's not presume that everyone knows that they're loved and cared for. Let's make sure in part of our giving that we look for opportunities to show God's love. God has given us so much. God blesses us each and every day. God is with us. Harvest is a time where we stop. We remember all that God gives us. Harvest is a time where we say thank you to God. And the way we say thank you is by giving something out of what God has given us. What is God asking you to give today? Let's pray. God, thank you for your provision. Thank you that you are a provider. 
God, I pray for each one of us here now and those um, of us who are watching later um, online, that God, that you will speak to us about what you would have us give to others, that you would allow us um, creativity in the way that we bless others that we um, are in our street, in our town, in our village, others that we work with, friends, family. And God, as we look to opportunities to bless others because you have blessed us, God, we pray that others will see you, would know about you, that others would come into a place of relationship with you. God, we are so thankful. Amen. Amen. In a moment, we're going to um, sing our uh, last song. And, um, and then afterwards, there's tea and coffee available. Um, after our last song, um, if you would like someone to pray with you, something else that we haven't um, been able to um, offer, um, then please um, just, just come and um, once I pray at the end, the cameras will go off. And then please come and um, grab a seat in the front here and someone will come and just be able to pray with you. Um, Whatever's going on. For me, um, I just feel so um, good to be here. It feels very, very important. Um, So if you want someone to pray with you, then please make use of that opportunity um, afterwards. Um, Thank you, guys. Can you stand? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord. we want to worship your name. We want to give you praise and glory. God, thank you. Thank you for all that you give to us. Thank you for today. God, may you be exalted. Amen. Amen. Please grab a tea and coffee if you want. Please go and grab your children from our other building if they are there. And it would be great to see you again next week. God bless.